Today, we will have a brief introduction of Growatt single-phase energy storage system installation. The core parts of the whole energy storage system are SPH6000, single-phase hybrid inverter, and 2 by GBLI6531 lithium battery system. There are six models in SPH series, covering the AC power from 3 kW to 6 kW. The lithium battery we used in this video is GBLI6531. The material of this battery system is LFP to guarantee excellent safety. The capacity of the battery is 6.5 kWh, a maximum of two pieces in parallel connection. Before installation, we need to prepare the tools The operating environment is so important that it will influence the lifespan of SPH. So please don't expose the SPH to the environment of sunshine, rain and snow. In order to ensure the machine can run normally and easy to operate, please provide adequate space for SPH. First of all, unpacking the SPH package and please check whether the unique damage or missing parts if happen. Please contact the supplier. There are the parts inside the SPH package. There are some connection terminals including PV switch, PV connection terminals, EPS output connection port, emergency power supply, AC grid connection port, antenna, USB for local FW update. RS-232 Wi-Fi for communication accessories DIP for safety standard of different countries Dry contact Battery connection terminals And communication terminals including CT port DRMS communication port only for Australia and New Zealand market 4852 port to connect the third-party lithium battery 4851 port to communicate with a smart meter NTC port for lead acid battery temperature sensor CAM port to communicate with Crowwatt lithium battery One, make sure the PV switch is off Two, similar to the traditional inverter connecting the input of PV panel can be realized by using PV terminal Three, Insert positive and negative cables of solar panel into the relative PV terminal of SPH. Limit maximum PV voltage 550 volts. Maximum PV input current 12 ampere. Max PV input power per string 4000 watts. Note: We suggest you use the cable which is greater than 4 square millimeters 12 AWG to connect. SPH has an AC grid terminal and EPS output terminal. We can follow this AC wire suggestion to choose suitable cables. First of all, please confirm the L and PE port of the connection terminal and thread cables through pressure screw, seal ring, threaded sleeve in sequence. Insert cables into connection terminal according to polarities indicated on it and tighten the screws. Push and rotate the threaded sleeve onto connection terminal until both are locked tightly. Plug the socket into AC output terminal. Clockwise rotation to tighten the socket. Counterclockwise rotation to loosen the socket. The EPS terminal connection is the same as the on-grid terminal installation. Tighten the threaded sleeve into the off-grid connection terminal and plug the socket into EPS outlet terminal. Caution! No matter the grid is available or outage, make sure to isolate EPS load from both the public grid and SPH AC grid terminal. Dismantle the waterproof cover. Thread cables through pressure screw, seal ring, threaded sleeve, waterproof cover. 
thread cables into connection terminal, then press the terminal by relevant tools until the battery cables are firmly connected. Finally, connect positive and negative pole of battery cable to the respective battery terminal of SPH. Note, we suggest the distance between battery and SPH no longer than 1.5 meters, and the power line must be larger than 5 AWG. For communication connection, thread the CT and battery communication cables can into the waterproof cover as well. Connect them into the corresponding terminal and connect the waterproof into the inverter finally. Pay attention to the direction of the CT as illustrated. Open the current transformer and you can see an arrow labeled on it which indicates the current direction and the direction of the arrow means from public grid to user load. ProWatt provides two cables whose length is 5 meters and 10 meters. ProWatt also provides RJ45 connector so the total length can reach 15 meters. If the length is longer than 15 meters, it's better to choose the smart meter. Firstly, connect the port 1 to the L line of grid, port 3 to the N line of grid, port 2 to L line of SPH, and port 4 to N line of SPH. Secondly, connect the lane line pin 5 white blue to port 5 RS485A of the smart meter and lane line pin 1 white orange to port 6 RS485B of the smart meter. Thirdly, connect the other side of lane line to port 4851 of the SPH. Note, the telephone sign presents in the smart meter means the communication is successful. The grounding connector is at the bottom of the SPH. If the customer requires the backup power function, GrowWatt provides the optional ATSS for our system. We can follow the diagram to connect the ATS. Standard 1 is for general use and Standard 2 is for the market like Australia where the neutral line can't be switched. Wires are needed before installation. 16 AWG wire has been included in accessory. Firstly, for grid connection. Use the 10 AWG cables to connect the port R7 from the end line of the grid and connect the port R1 from L line of the grid. Use one 16 AWG cable to connect the port 3, port A1 and the other 16 AWG cable to connect the port 5 port A2. Connect the grounding cable finally. Secondly, for EPS of SPH connection, use the 10 AWG cable to connect the port 5 and EPS end of SPH, and the other 10 AWG cable connect the port 3 and EPSL of SPH. Thirdly, for EPS load connection, use the 10 AWG cable to short port R8 and port 6 and connect to the end line of the EPS load and use the 10 AWG to cable to short port R2 and port 4 and connect to the L line of EPS load finally. That's the complete connection of standard one. For the Australia market, you still need to short the port R7 and port 5 based on the standard one. Unpack the battery package and there's some parts inside. Ground cable. Communication cable between the battery and the inverter. User manual. This is GBLI 6531 battery and here is the LED light for SOC of the battery. The battery system is 6.5 kWh and a usable capacity is 6 kWh. There are power cables used for two batteries and inverter in parallel connection. Pay attention to the communication cable. 
cable with L3, L4 parallel label is for the communication between batteries. Cable with L2, L4 CAN label is for the communication between battery and inverter. There is the button to power on and off the battery. COM.1 communication terminal from battery to the inverter. COM.2 is the communication terminal between two batteries, the ground terminal, the battery positive power terminal, and the battery negative power terminal. For connection, firstly connect the positive and negative power cable from the inverter to the battery. Connect communication cable from inverter to COM.1 port. Secondly, connect the power and communication cable from the first battery to the second battery. SPH provides the RS232 port for communication. The whole energy storage system can be monitored via Shine Wi-Fi and Shine Link. Firstly, turn the pin 1 and pin 2 to on before connecting Shine Wi-Fi or Shine Link to RS232 port. For Shine Link, plug the Shine Link stick into the RS232 port and tighten it by screw. Power the Shine LAN box and use Ethernet cable connected to the router internet. When the web light is flashing means it's connecting to the router and being on means its connection is successful. ShineLink has the function of automatic IP addressing. The ShineLink stick and Shine LAN box will connect automatically. The flashing device light means ShineLink is working. After all the installation are finished, here are some steps to power on the whole system. 1. Turn on the AC breaker between the inverter and grid. 2. Turn on the DC breaker of solar input and the PV switch of inverter. 3. Turn on the DC breaker for the battery system. 4. Press the power button of the two batteries within 30 seconds and observe the LED indication finally. If the light of the run on both batteries flicker for five times, it means that two battery systems power on successfully and the communication between two batteries is well. If alarm light of the battery turns red, which means that there is parallel failure and should be fixed before power on again. After the system was powered on, if PV, grid and a battery are available, the system will work on normal mode. When the SPH is on the normal mode, the screen shows normal and LED is green. If SPH didn't enter normal mode successfully, especially if the LED is red, please contact Growa Service Engineer for help. Note: Please set the sensor model through the HMI when selecting CT or smart meter. Here is the final energy storage system including SPH 6000. GBLY6531 ATSS AC breaker between inverter and grid AC breaker for EPS output Smart meter DC breaker for battery DC breaker for solar input